Hey guys, how you doing? Ray here again. If you'd like to subscribe to my channel, uh, it's Nitro Kyosho. Uh, today we're going to be doing uh, the second installment on these guys, the Nitro cars. And today we're going to be doing uh, the section on maintenance, okay, which is a, a big overlooked thing and a thing that can really raise uh, a lot of trouble with these guys if you don't uh, take care of them. Okay, uh, everything requires maintenance, guys. Uh, even your body. I mean, if you just abuse these guys and you don't take care of them, you're going to run into problems. And then, in, in that case, most people start to blame manufacturers. Uh, so today, uh, we're going to talk about general maintenance on these and how to keep these things running good. Uh, the first thing uh, I want to talk about is just generally cleaning them. Now that's going to vary depending on where you're running them. Uh, most of the time when I'm done running mine, uh, you can clean these guys off. I'll use like uh, the container of like the Clorox wipes or you can use like, uh, you know, the sprays for like kitchens, you know, like uh, Lysol sprays that you, you spray on the counter to wipe. You can do the cleaning a lot with those. Um, I use these style of uh, Q-tips a lot, these long stick ones to get in areas too to clean. Uh, an air compressor is one of the big, big things for, for blowing out these guys and, and cleaning them real good. Uh, and as far as the internals, let's pop off the body. Uh, obviously too, if you are getting uh, a lot of mud and stuff like that. Uh, let's get this out of there. If you're getting a lot of mud and stuff like that in your tires, guys, you'd want to take the tires off and wash them off. Uh, always checking inside in your drivetrain to make sure there's nothing in there binding up with your drivetrain too, any kind of long grassies or you know grass weeds that can get sucked up inside there and cause some trouble. Uh, the biggest things on these guys, all right, as far as maintenance, when you're done with your fuel, guys, always remove it out of the tank, okay? Don't leave it in there. If you're going to go back maybe the same day, okay, maybe you can leave it in there. But if you're going to go back a day or two later, I wouldn't advise leaving it in there. Uh, you can get yourself like a little uh, bulb, uh, like one of those, actually those things they used to use for the ears. And you can take a little piece of fuel line, stick that on the end of one of those, and you can use those to suck the fuel out. Um, or you can just run the tank till it's almost empty and then just dump the rest out. Uh, that's one of the big things that can cause a lot of trouble, guys, is leaving uh, fuel in there and getting it contaminated. Uh, the next thing is the glow plug can, is really the huge, huge part of this engine, guys. And the glow plugs don't last forever, despite what we might want to think. And uh, sometimes after 10 or 12 or 15 runs, they start to lose some power. If you're having a lot of problems starting, stopping, and, and a lot of bad performance, and, and you feel that uh, your engine is tuned pretty good, that's usually a, a sign. You know, just replace that. They're not that much. You can get them on sheets for, uh, uh, you know, 4 or $5 a piece. Um, the other thing, guys, is the air filter, okay, which you can't see, so let me spin this guy around because it's on the other side of that, this right here. Now, most of these in today's RC world come with a dust cover, and then they have the actual air filter uh, underneath. The dust cover doesn't get oiled. Uh, that's made to catch the outer. The, uh, the one inside is meant to catch the majority before it gets into your engine. Never, 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 and one more time, never run these without an air filter on them, guys. You will ruin these engines within minutes if you're in dirt. You might get away with it for a little bit if you're on pavement. Uh, but you do not want to suck up any kind of sand or grit into these engines. You will, you will destroy them. So never run these without an air filter, and always make sure that your filter underneath okay uh, underneath your dust filter make sure that's oiled and uh, 
squeeze out the excess oil just so it's uh, got a nice amount on it. So always keep that oils, you know, oiled up guys and always make sure you got a good plug in there. Uh, those are the two big things. Um, as far, and, and really, I mean, if you're racing them, now a lot of guys that race them will use the silicones, which primarily they use because uh, there's different, uh, you know, the way it makes the buggy perform. There's different weights uh, for the front, uh, center, and the rear, uh, the diffs. Um, and it's easier to clean out. Racers use them because they're always maintenance in those. If you're backyard bashing and you want to use grease, which is going to last longer for you and not leak out, um, you know, basically how I determine, you can, you can do it a couple ways to make it simple for yourselves. You can just record how many runs you, you've made. You know, every time you make a run, jot it down on paper, just put a check mark so you know. Uh, Generally, if these, when you turn them, if they're getting really, really loose and spinning really, really freely, that, that's usually a sign too. It needs to be, they need to be changed out. Uh, so the diffs definitely need to be maintained on these too to keep the thing running nice, uh, keep it from, uh, you know, ruining those gears in there and binding up and that kind of stuff. Um, and having... You know, generally having the engine tuned properly, uh, not running it where it's overheating. Definitely, if you have or are going to buy one of these vehicles, definitely, definitely get yourself a temperature gauge so you can check your temperature. On, and your manual will generally tell you what temperature uh, the engine should be running at. Um, if Obviously, if they tell you... Uh, 210 on this to keep it around 210, 220, you don't want it up to 300 degrees or you'll eventually ruin your engine. Definitely uh, keeping, I would say, the top five there, keeping this clean, the air filter oiled, uh, removing your fuel out of there, number two, number three, uh, you know, the glow plug in there, uh, four, having it tuned properly so it's not uh, overheating on you and uh, five, maintaining uh, your differentials and your, your axles, cleaning them out. Make sure there's not a lot of sanding, grit, rubbing in there. Uh, and just basically overall blowing it out with a compressor, wiping everything down after you use it. Obviously wait till it cools off. Uh, you know, keeping your tires cleaned up so you can get traction. You, obviously if these get caked with mud, you're going to start losing traction. And other than that, guys, there's not you know, really a whole lot of maintenance on these guys. I mean, you have your shocks, obviously. Um, you fill those with whatever oils you want uh, for the performance you're looking for, and those generally will last uh, quite some time. Uh, you can also tell when those, when they're kind of getting beat, you'll start seeing a buggy really sagging a lot and that kind of stuff. A lot of the stuff is common sense with these guys, and a lot of this stuff is maybe stuff you got to think about for a little bit, but uh, really, as far as care and maintenance, that's you know what I've given you the big things, uh, and I hope that this video helps you out. And remember, you got to maintenance everything, and you know, guys, it doesn't matter what you if it's your a human body or an automobile or a, your home or you know anything, uh, things require maintenance and. Uh, you know, if you keep these things maintained and you keep them clean and you, and you follow these procedures, you get a lot of long life out of these guys. You really will. And they'll uh, treat you really good. So if you treat them good, they'll treat you back in return. Um, you know, the other thing, too, uh, is making sure uh, that your uh, clutch is good, too, obviously. Um, and also another thing to, to check, uh, usually with the clutch you'll start to, to know when that starts to go bad on you. Um, but the other thing you should check too is in your uh, bell housing here, that is where your clutch is inside of, and that's the bell housing you're going to mesh with your big spur gear. Uh, inside of there you have two bearings, one in the front 
and then one in the back of the gear. You have the gear and then there's one in the front and one in the back. And uh, those should be something too that you should you should pop off every so often after every so many runs and you could oil those up too and that definitely uh, definitely wouldn't hurt you just to pop off the bell housing and oil those. Uh, but that generally would require removing the engine. So before you do that, make sure you have a knowledge of, of your buggy and how it works and how everything goes together before you attempt to do something like that. Uh, but generally pulling the engines off these guys is, uh, is fairly simple. It's just four screws and, you know, disconnecting your exhaust and, uh, you know, maybe some linkage. It's, uh, look at the stuff. Like I said, you know, it's basically common sense. Just look what's connected and Take a picture if you have to. It doesn't hurt. Everyone's got cell phones and cameras today. Take pictures of what you're doing so you know if you, if you forget how something goes back together. And uh, the other thing is if you do that and you put the engine back on, make sure that you, you have a good uh, mesh between your spur gear and your bell housing gear. Generally what I do is put a little piece of thin, regular piece of like uh, paper through there and when it comes out, you know, run it through the paper and when it comes out it should have like a track mark of the gear but it shouldn't be cutting through the paper. If it's cutting through it's telling you it's uh, uh, too hard. Also you can hold, usually you can hold them, you can, you can usually feel if they're binding if you push them together too tight but usually the paper works pretty good. So other than that guys I hope this video gives you some uh, insight uh, to maintaining these and I hope that this uh, helps you out. So I thank you for watching.